the cat's right, and, and uh, um, we again, Mary and Shaw Crow Smith, and I want to thank all those folks who participated in our session. One of the things that we we talked about uh, after folks had left the room is is how um, this year, and, and I've been doing this for 13 years, and Mary has been my coach here for eight years, that we saw a lot more discussion about education and not just uh, our workforce development. And I think part of it goes to it, as Captain mentioned, what Ron Makeley talked about. You know, we're living in a society where um, the economy changes rapidly. Ron talked about how long it took to change from an agricultural society to a manufacturing society, and then how quickly things are changing digitally. And we thought from an education perspective, we're not keeping up. We're not giving our, our children the opportunity uh, to find out about maybe what some of these advanced careers are. One of the things that uh, that we talked about in our group is that first of all, there has to be a much better connection between the business community and the uh, and the education community. You know, we can't go in once a year and do a career fair and feel as a business community we're doing a real good job of, of connecting with with, with the, uh, the education community, not just the students, uh, but the teachers and, and then a lot of the other counselors. One of the things we we was suggested is that. Perhaps we all know that, that, that children learn differently and children have different interests. And um, early on, should we stop doing skills assessments? You know, what do kids like? What would they like to do? What would they be better at? You know, if I hate math, why are you going to teach me math for like 14 or 12 years rather? You know, where maybe I'm better suited off going in a different direction because of a, a particular aptitude that, that, that I might have. Uh, but we also said that it has to involve, uh, and we hated the term, and we're not going to use it anymore, at least in our group, guidance counselors. Guidance counselors is an outdated term that basically says, how many kids are we getting to go to college? You know, and we think there has been an emphasis, as the Senate President and, and the Speaker knows, on, um, on making sure that, that we have our students get some type of certification, whether it's a traditional college degree, whether it's a career and technical education degree, or those of you who participate in the Real Jobs Program know that there's different types of certifications, just to make sure that, that um, our students have the, uh, the, the right the skill set. But if we're going to do that, again, we have to kind of get away from that guidance counselor mentality. And our suggestion is twofold. Number one, we should probably get rid of that term and talk about either career counselors or career advisors. But if we're going to do that, we have to give those folks the tools, two tools that we mentioned, uh, to make them more effective. Number one, we have to have more of a dialogue with them so they understand the career opportunities that are out there. And number two, uh, based on discussions that we've had, is that uh, the ratio of, of students to counselors is, is outlandish. That you might have one counselor or advisor advising 200 kids. And that's impossible to do that in an, an effective method. Um, we, we also um, talked about that, that perhaps career pathways or career guidance should be part of the curriculum. And we understand in some school districts it is, but it's optional. And we're thinking that if, in fact, we're going to prepare our students for, uh, for the jobs of the future, that career exploration should be part of the everyday curriculum in every school in the, in the state of Rhode Island. Then we started moving into a little, I'm sorry, there was one more, uh, on, and I'm sure, again, it was an unintended uh, consequence, but we recently passed this rate bond issue uh, for schools in, in the state of Rhode Island. The challenge is, is the way that it was written, you find schools like a career in technical education, like a Davies Career uh, in Technical Education, which, by the way, a few years ago was voted one of the most outstanding schools. It was one of two schools in Rhode Island to be voted one of the most outstanding schools in America. But the way the bond issue was written, they're not going to get any money for their infrastructure because they're not part of the school district. So we have to look at ways to make sure that we look at career and technical and other alternative education facilities uh, to make sure that that they are part of the, uh, of the mainstream system as well. Moving on to uh, other issues, we, we, uh, we talked about how small business people are having a challenge with filling out the application process for job training grants. If you don't know, for some reason, and we think it's regulatory more than legislatively, is that in order now to, be, to receive uh, training dollars from the state of Rhode Island, you have to be a vendor of the state of Rhode Island. So you have to go through all that paperwork to become a vendor before you can you can get the uh, uh, the grants. Uh, we understand that part of it's accountability, but we also understand a lot of small businesses saying, you know what, it's not worth it. We'll just pass. We'd like to see that uh, cut around. Transportation is still a major issue. You know, I think traditionally we've talked about uh, using RIPTA, and our group is saying that maybe we should look at alternative sources to help people get to work. First of all, a system that doesn't account for companies that might be running three shifts. 
um, is, is, is not as effective as it could be. If the closest bus to a particular manufacturer, for example, is going to get you there at 9 and your shift stops at 7, then, then, then where's the help there? So should we be looking at uh, different sources like Uber or Lyft or, or again, maybe companies tripping in and buying vans to, 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 to shuttle people there. Unfortunately, our, our public transportation system is very um, Providence-centric and it certainly doesn't help those communities outside of Providence. Also, child care came up as a major issue. Child care is still I mean, we need affordable child care. It doesn't do no good if you're training, but you can't afford to go to work because child care is so expensive. So, um, and the biggest thing, the problem, not the biggest, but what amazed most of the folks in the group, 90% of the group heard about programs that they never knew existed in the state of Rhode Island. So we've got to find a better way, either through the governor's workforce, or someone to serve on that, or, uh, or we even talked about you know, everyone's favorite, the Division of Taxation, who touches every business. But is there a vehicle so we can find out what programs are there? And we said we're going to inventory it. And I know that I am out of town, uh, out of time. So um, those are the, the summary from our committees. And, uh, and now, gentlemen, as you know, one of the things that we will do is we'll compile this and make sure that your office can uh, get this. Uh, but I didn't know if you had any first impressions based on the recommendations that you've heard this morning that you'd like to comment on. Or do you want to wait till you get the full report? 